In this video, I am going to compare two four-person all-season tents. It's a head-to-head -head comparison between the Mountain Hardware Triangle 4 and the Heliberg Sotarius. Now, the choice of tents for this comparison. Both are fully geodesic four-person dome tents. They're both designed for the same type of use, that's all season expeditions and hard challenging environments. And lastly, I have to compare and review what is available to me as a small independent content creator on YouTube. Now, unfortunately not through field testing, but actually through research that I have done in preparation of this comparison, I'm actually gonna look at two other four person all season tents. Uh, one of them is at a similar price point to the Martin Hardware Triangle 4, and one of them is at a similar price point to the Hilleberg Sotaris. Topics under discussion in this video will be tent design, including uh, poles and fabrics, and how that relates to weather resistance. Both tents are four person tents, so I will look at interior volume and the room for four people in those tents. I will look at vestibule volume and storage space. I will look at interior features, uh, such as pockets and gear hanging loops. Then I will cover ventilation on both of the tents. And finally, we'll look at the final thoughts that I have for both of these tents at the particular price point that they occupy on the market. Now, the Hilleberg Sotaris is a fully geodesic dome tent. It has five pole crossing points, um, four corners kind of at the top and at the roof, uh, and here on either side, which gives the tent tremendous strength. In addition to the four poles supporting the main structure, we then have a separate uh, tunnel type addition to the tent, which gives really good vestibule volume. The poles are 10 millimeter DAC NSL green poles, which are probably the best on the market. This fabric here is a 40 denier double silicon coated nylon with an 18 kilogram tear strength. The inner tent fabric is also 40 denier. And lastly, the ground sheet fabric is 100 denier. Now with the guy lines being directly guide to the poles, it then means that this is incredibly rigid. I mean, as I'm pushing against this here, it, it literally just can't move. So the direct guying of the guy lines to the poles makes it very, very strong. The shape and profile of the tent from the rear, uh, and particularly the vestibule design, means that you can see here it's actually very, very aerodynamic. So that will shed wind with ease. Um, if a vestibule is incredibly aerodynamic, it will allow for a little bit of weight of snow buildup. I mean, a vertical wall is less aerodynamic, but allows more snow buildup. So you might have a little bit more snow buildup here, but the benefits are in the aerodynamics of the tent. The side walls on the tent, however, you know, are a little bit more vertical. Uh, and again, with the gang and the 10 mil poles, uh, resistance to wind will actually still be very, very good, but also will be a resistance to heavy snow loading. So the Mountain Hardware Triangle 4 is also a fully geodesic tent design uh, with four poles supporting the main structure. And the crossing points and pole design is actually the same as on the Heliberg. Um, the difference being here that the porch or vestibule pole actually connects down to the tent. Whereas in the Heliberg though, you can see that's it's like an extended vestibule with that sort of extended tunnel design. Now the poles on both tents are actually the same. So Mountain Hardware also used 10 millimeter DAC NSL green poles. Just to correct myself here, um, both tents have actually seven pole crossing points. I think I maybe said five on the Heliberg, but both actually have seven. Uh, one on the roof, four corners, and to add either side to so the pole structure on the tents is the same. The fabrics, particularly for the fly sheet now here, are very, very different. Uh, Mountain Hardware use a 70 denier fly sheet fabric. It is coated with one side on with uh, it is coated on one side with silicone and the other side is a PU coating. The inner tent on the triangle is also 40 denier. Uh, the floor, however, is a 70 denier and not the 100 denier that would be on a Hilleberg. The walls in this tent at the side, you know, are also quite vertical and with the 10 mil poles and the actual pole design there will be no issues at all with snow loading and um, this tent actually on the vestibules has snow valances which you can pop snow on or even if you're in other challenging environments you can put rocks and stones on these if it's difficult to get your pegs in 
I've set the camera up here so that you can see the difference in aerodynamic of the two rear vestibules of the tents. Um, the triangle here is much more vertical, whereas you can see the Hilly Berg uh, is a little bit more sort of sloping. Uh, benefit to the Hilly Berg in the wind, benefit to the triangle in the snow. If I'm quickly looking at the gang system on the tent, um, the fly sheet here attaches directly to the poles with clips um, so there's no doubt that when this is pulled out because the fly sheet is attached then directly to the poles that this is, is very very strong. Um, I like the idea of the equaling tension on this. If, if this here is moved around this cord here balances out through a little uh, ring. Um, I like the way that this is sewn in here with reflective fabric. The only thing I don't like is actually the quality of the guy line cord, cord. It is definitely inferior to what would be used on the Hilliburg. Now to look at the interior volume in the Mountain Hardware Triangle 4. There is no doubt that the volume in here is really, really good and four people could easily sit up on a tent. At the moment, my head is nowhere near the actual corner there. Uh, someone else could easily sit beside me and in the diagonally opposite corners. So there would be good, livable space for four people in this tent. Lengthwise, the room is absolutely fantastic. Uh, my feet are at least a foot, if not a foot and a half away from the far end of the tent. And my head here is just now touching the, the front door. So really, really good length in the tent. Widthwise, um, not so good. I'll maybe compare it in a moment, obviously, with the Ceterius. And um, These are two big um, camp rest, uh, thermo rests. Uh, a couple of neo airs on either side. And I can't get the fourth Neowear just, you know, flat. But I think, to be honest, if there were four Neowears, they probably would go in here okay. As an alternative, though, sleeping across a tent in this is absolutely brilliant. And um, the two longer mattresses I have here in the middle, I have all four mattresses laying down flat. I'm six foot one. Absolutely tons of space. I'll maybe turn around. So now, when I'm lying across the tent, my feet are just touching the side wall and that's the, the headroom that I have. So really, really good breadth in the tent and I feel the way to do this on this tent is four people lying across it. And that's obviously four adults. If it's two adults and two children, brilliant. I mean, you've got even more space. The tent has gear hanging lips in each of the four corners. The tent also has really, really good internal tension uh, which reduces the flapping around in high winds now that's actually one difference that i actually feel to say just in respect of um, comparing the tent design this tent is inner first whereas the hilly berg is fly sheet first and there are obviously advantages and disadvantages of that um, some manufacturers do claim that it's stronger i honestly can't understand how or why um, but the disadvantage to inner tent pitching is that if it's raining uh, or it's windy it's a little bit more awkward with the tent set up now, internal storage here, again, fantastic. Four really, really big pockets on either side and two additional pockets, you know, here. So you have six, you know, pockets that have got really, really good volume in them. So internal volume in the Hilliburg, and there's no doubt to me that immediately this does feel slightly smaller. The roof and whole space in the roof is, is that little bit less. Um, the in, inner t tension is actually very, very, very good in this tent, you know, for especially for a tent that's pitched outer first. And the four mattress test, again, struggling a little bit, and I think struggling, you know, a little bit more so than what we had on the triangle. Um, lengthwise, you know, absolutely tons of length. So it'll be really interesting in a moment to see how we can get on, you know, uh, across the tent. Pockets in the tent, really really good a greater number of pockets but they're all actually smaller and at a little bit of a lower a level uh, the tent has really um, a couple of gear hanging loops so you've got one in the roof here and then you've got little eyelets at the side that you can hang your know, gear on as well so pretty good you know for for that so I've now obviously set the sleeping arrangements up differently in the tent uh, and we're looking at lying across it and the four mattresses here fit absolutely no problem you know side by side so there is enough room lengthwise there is enough but it's not just as much 
as what it would be in the Triangle 4, but that's not really needed. So I think, you know, in, in fairness, I'm not sure about the, the manufacturer's sleeping configurations, but in fairness to both the tents, they work slightly better if you're sleeping across the tent and there's easily enough space for four people to do, to do that. So this is just the front vestibule volume in the Triangle 4. Um, three packs fitting in here, absolutely no problem. This is the distance between the bottom of the packs and the front of the inner tent. Uh, this is a 70 litre pack and both these other packs are 50 litres. Um, if you're out in really, really bad weather and you want to get sheltered from that weather uh, and you want to then change in the tent, I would easily, I'm not going to do a change demonstration, but I would easily have enough room to get changed here with the front tent zippered up. So I'm keeping the inner of the tent actually dry. You're now looking at the space in the rear vestibule of the Triangle 4. The three packs sitting in here, they are in, they're all empty. They have some space, but not a lot. So I must admit, I'm a bit disappointed by the size of the vestibule in the Triangle. You are now looking at the vestibule volume in Hilliburg. And this here is completely something else. I think that was obvious from the, the exterior design. Uh, I have the three packs sitting up here, pushed up to the front. Now, I know in reality, you will nearly always have the packs in the rear of the tent, if you can, in the rear vestibule. But I'm just doing this to show uh, and give an idea of the volume here. I have loads of room. Um, and this is quite a flat roof, whereas the triangle roof is, is sloping down. And again, getting changed in here, you know, the roof's a little bit low, but it needs that for performance and wind. Um, there's no problem at all here, you know, getting changed and just the distance on the triangle between the bottom of the packs and the inner tent was probably about that much. The distance here, you know, is this, I mean, it's much, much more. You are now looking at the rear vestibule of the Hilliburg. And there is absolutely no doubt that there is significantly more space in this area too. Now part of the reason is that in the triangle you have the the vestibule goes back into like one point, so it's coming into a point. Whereas in the Hilliburg here, it goes back into two. So at the very far away point of the vestibule, you've got this extra width. Um, so much, much better for storage in this one. At the start of the video, I said that I would introduce two other tents uh, that I haven't actually field tested, unfortunately. But if you're thinking about buying one of these tents, I feel that these are contenders. The contender in relation to the Hilliburg here would be the Slingfin Hardshell. Slingfin are quite a small American company, but they don't make any compromises at all in respect of the quality products that they produce. Now, there are two reasons why I really like the Slingfin Hardshell. One of them is that it has the potential of having six poles over the main structure as opposed to four. There's an optional high wind kit that you can add to it, and that gives you the extra two poles. So six poles supporting a structure of similar area is, in my opinion, certainly stronger than four. Apart from the pole structure, the other aspect of the sling fin that I really like is its pitching options. You can pitch it inner first or outer first, and due to what they call a web truss system. This web truss allows you to assemble the poles, and the poles then can be freestanding, and you can either attach the inner underneath it or the fly sheet over the top. So an alternative to the Mountain Hardware Triangle 4 at a similar price point, for me, the North Face Bastion 4. Now I've had two Triangle tents and a number of North Face tents, and I think you could argue all day about which is the better product. I mean, there's fours and against with everything, but they're both well-proven expedition tents. What I like about the Bastion 4 is that it has five, pole, uh, five poles supporting the main structure as opposed to four poles. I also like the, full, the pole configuration, which is a little bit different too, and I think it will add really well for its strength and high winds and snow loading. So the North Face Bastion 4 as an alternative to the Triangle 4. So one of the final areas that I want to discuss is ventilation. And in this Hilliburg tent, it's absolutely outstanding. So you have a massive front vent and wire supported hood here that is also supported by the guy line system. So that's at the front. 
at the sides you have a vent cover and just about this much from the vent cover on the inside of the tent you have vents that you can open uh, so that's the same on both sides so good ventilation you know here and again at the rear of the tent a wire supported and guy line supported vent that is fully sealable that will allow great airflow right up in the tent but not actually getting uh, any bad weather towards the inner tent ventilation options on the on the triangle four um, there aren't really anything specific you certainly could vent with the front zip here but because there's no hood actually protecting it it's harder to vent in inclement weather now on the Hillyburg tent the fly sheet comes right down to the ground whereas in the mountain hardware it doesn't so you do get airflow and circulation under, under there which is a big bonus I suppose at the rear of the tent again a good protection good protective cover for the zipper but nothing really that you could certainly vent if, if the weather wasn't good and at the side we have a window and I have to say I think a vent, a vent hood here would be more used than what a window would be so my final thoughts on each of these tents in some ways this is really really easy in some ways it's really really difficult uh, which is the better of the two tents the Hilliburg undoubtedly uh, it has better vestibules uh, front and back due to, due, to the, uh, due to the design it almost has a little tunnel tent added on to the front of it uh, it has better ventilation front middle and back and the quality of fabrics used in the tent are better the fly sheet is potentially stronger because it's double silicon and in the industry a double silicon fabric that silicon coated on the outside and inside is stronger than one that has a silicon pu combination that's why the fly sheet on the triangle needs to be 70 denier whereas the fly sheet in this is lighter and it's only 40 denier and potentially stronger the ground sheet or or on the tent on the Hilliburg is 100 denier which is tougher than the 70 denier of the triangle however to be fair if you're using the tents with a footprint then that may not actually matter I prefer the pitching of the Hilliburg with external pole sleeves uh, and the external pitch first uh, I've had a lot of tents that were inner first pitching and I liked them for a while but I've gradually now sort of diverted and gone more towards the external pitching because it just offers easier pitching in inclement conditions value for money the triangle this particular one it's not this year's model, it's the year before uh, and you can have one of these for £850 whereas the Hilliburg is £1,860 the only difference between this particular triangle and the current model is the current model has an internal pole as opposed to the external on this one so the triangle ep represents tremendous value Mountain Hardware are a very very reputable brand I have had two triangles before and I really really like them I currently have two Hillybergs, so I've good experience with, with both the brands. This is undoubtedly better featured, better quality, better designed, but this one is half the price. If I was going to buy one of the two of them for a particular trip, I, I would really, really struggle. One day I would choose the Mountain Hardware, the next day I would probably choose the Hillyburg. So on this one, I'm not going to make a call. I'm actually going to let you decide. Let me know in the comments which one you would go for. Look, thank you very much for watching. Uh, it'll not be long, they'll have another video up and thanks for your support and I hope you've enjoyed the video.